Thank you for joining us live here in the KEXP studios. I'm Cheryl Waters, and we are listener-powered, so I want to thank everyone who supports KEXP and makes these wonderful sessions possible. Today, I am here in the studios with our good friends, Algiers. Welcome. Hey. It's been too long. It is always a wonderful day when you grace the studios, and we're so happy to have you here with a new album, Shook. Thank you. Yeah, it's always good to be back here. So. Well, thank you always for making time for KEXP, and we'll catch up, but why don't you share some new songs with us? It's Algiers live on KEXP. It's been too long. It is...
talking about? They talking about nuclear war. Nuclear war. They talking about? They talking about nuclear war. Yeah. They talking about? They talking about nuclear war. Nuclear war. They talking about? They talking about nuclear war. Nuclear war. They talking about? Stood in front of out of the stone. By the glad big hostage school drummers. Ten minutes to halftime, a horrified nation looks on. The indestructible compact disc. Play with lasers, putting weapons and tapes with obsolescence. Boy genius grown old is dead. Meanwhile, the anti-Germans return again to the bloodland. Banging pots and pans, shouting black at the kettle. Hostages free while jets explode across the center sea. 30 Italians, foul Belgians, and a Frenchman sacrifice their lives to the sun. They prefer a song with a subtle and obvious message. For the riot and the police to be down, they drop the bombs, and then the community burns for the man to make good on his promises. They're all forced to move, then they're all forced to choose which of the coast is the real thing now. A master for color is ranged down and falls with the prince's tie. Eulogizing and lying eyes on the late great Robert Welch. He saw the future king of America playing his stick stones to office. And all the special effects flicks for clothes on farm film. They'd have been wiser to find a better home for their room. How they chose to enter the temple to do it. A more grotesque representation of representation than Dante's capital could turn out of 6 to 166 rotations. And ever since the 60s, hair has been the dominant form of social protest. And both nation state birthdays and missile day parades. This endangered world of play, a blast in incarnate of a shutter guy, it squanders geographical knowledge. This machine state power like a Hollywood spectacle. It's just an obvious style trap rap. Once again, a gunman kills 20 in a McDonald's crowd. He was man with children, rolled over with about six guns somewhere in Southern California. It's just an obvious style trap rap. That gets better by the day, even though most of children. But it's a game and rule that please profit and piss it lies which in the same blood of oil. Cause there are other modes of fashion that they want to enlist. A collaboration is not position to wait for the day on the next ball down for Romo to caucus, clear, body, somebody else to come around and set you free. Or else they'll burn bit of meats and motor block while you try to appease the term apostles and the European. That's the way we are, us Georgia folk. Don't smile too much, cause it ain't no joke. I'm not gonna scream what I got for ya. Want a piece of this? Where I'm at, then I'm down in Georgia.
Shout out to Gang Grizzly. Tris Griffin. Somebody's train. Fuck to the 
of life who pass ain't never been a rough town When the truth come down, like the light that they shut up in your face, you better clock it with your third out. Most niggas wanna get into the game just to bounce their head and move their feet in. It's all good to that blue light flashing to snatch your ass and stop that beating. With the white coat lies they hold, then they told they folk they rise and fight back. They got the rise and stay, but the whole life get into control and the stays a hijack. So you before the end ones are gonna come around. Now they're running everything from behind your preach, your teacher, drug police, and sweep your mind if you don't buy that. Those water sins are running up. They tell you to slow down. All they do is fall down. If the whole world is drowning, then let us all drown. Is Algiers live here in the KEXP studios? Songs from the new album Shook, which is incredible. That song makes me all kind of happy when I play it at home. I put it on repeat and play it about 10 or 11 times, so I kind of feel like you need to do that for me. Right now. <laughs> I'm not used to just hearing that one once. Oh, so, so good. You feel like a band who is at the apex of their craft, but every album you just explode it again and again. And I feel like apex isn't the right word because I don't know how high you all are going to go. The sky's the limit. <laughs> well, thank you. That's probably the best compliment we could ask for, especially coming from you. So uh, we appreciate that. And I guess every time we come to Seattle, we get into a type of zone because everybody here is so good to us. 
So uh, it's just, you know, when you feel good, you play good. Well, we are a town that loves music for sure. And speaking of a town that loves music, you began writing Shook in Atlanta, which is where it all began, although you've, many of you have lived in many places besides Atlanta. Since then, what brought you all to Atlanta at the same time? Uh, we were touring the last record, and it was the fifth date of the tour. And we played in Atlanta on uh, March 14th, 2020. Ooh. Everything shut down the next day. And so, you know, it just so happened, I guess it was Providence or whatever you want to call it. We were in the town where we were from, and we had family from there. And uh, Ryan's cousin Ben was good enough to house us. We stayed there for like two months, and we just, uh, yeah, we just took made, it over. Made it, made hot fire. <laughs> no, it was really nice because it, it brought back a lot of memories of Atlanta. And there's like the it's a it's a city in a forest, basically, is what they say. So we really tried to capture that entire environment in the record, and I feel like you can really hear that there. I do hear that. Are you using f actual field recordings in there? Because you mix so many different kinds of sounds, um, especially as a non-musician myself. I don't. I can't even begin to know where those are all coming from. Yeah, it's it's it's. There's a lot of field recordings, cicada stuff. Lee can fill it in more, but there's like frogs, rain, because Atlanta rains a lot, and it's a very humid spot, and there's a lot of trains. So we try to capture the juxtaposition between the countryside and the industrial side. Yeah, Lee. Yeah, I mean, a lot of uh, a lot of what we pull from is just, um, and, and the ethos of Algiers is geography and place. So that's embedded with the field recordings and that type of thing. Shook is jam packed with features and collaborations, which is definitely something that makes it stand out among your past releases. You're always changing it up from record to record, but there's such a wide range of contributors on this record. What inspired you to take on this new era of collaboration with Shook? Well, for a while, we wanted to bring in other voices, you know. Uh, you know, philosophically and politically, Algiers is about in inclusivity and a, a, a myriad other voices, you know, particularly people who are pushed to the margins. And, and also just structurally, I just got tired of hearing myself like pasted 500 times singing back at me in every record. And so, you know, <laughs> we, uh, uh, it was cool because uh, in a way, COVID atomized a lot of people and quarantine did, but we kind of found ourselves in a very familiar territory because when we started the band, we all lived in different places and we created the band that just existed online and it was a place where we could be friends and music was a way of navigating our personal issues from day to day. And so, you know, it just made sense to reach out to our collaborators and friends to see if they wanted to get involved. And it just kind of augmented that space that we existed in in the first place. I'm hearing over and over that COVID was a time where people were able to collaborate more with more people because they were more available during mm -hmm. that time and not out on tour. So this might be a flash in the pan that can never really be repeated. Obviously, you'll continue to collaborate with people, but mm -hmm. having such a wide range of people available. And as you said, sharing music and creating a record online is not anything new for the band. But were you able to record in person with people? Did, was there sort of community um, sense in the recordings? Yeah, we had a couple of people that came into the studio. Mark Cisneros, um, you know, he plays every instrument on earth and he's amazing. <laughs> he came into the studio when we were in Philly once. Um, my sister, uh, we have a track called Green Iris and my sister is a, uh, what is it, mezzo-soprano? The, the, the highest one? I don't know. But she sings background vocals on that. Um, I got her to sing when I was staying at her house in Atlanta. Uh, we have people from... You know, uh, a lot of people recorded and mailed it in, but, yeah. you know, we did have people that were present there. Most of the homies were distant, and it, it made a lot of sense because we were so atomized, other than the three of us, we were in a house in Atlanta. It made a lot of sense to have people just contribute. What was really amazing for us is the fact that people were like, yes, that was wild. We were like, oh, cool, you want to do this? Like, I sent Backwash the track, and she just came back with this hot rhyme. We didn't do anything with it. Same with Wood. Same with every single person who contributed to everything. It was really amazing. I will say that, like, I don't think that COVID was a flash the pan in terms of interrupting the capitalist machine because once you do that it does bring a certain sense of creativity for people and a space to breathe and talk and be and exist and create what does that make you think about when moving forward and doing something in the future i mean you're always mixing it up from record to record i think excuse me i think that we are so familiar with everything that's in our you know, arsenal or whatever, we know what we can do, but we forget that other people don't know what we can do. And so we'll never have enough time to work out all the ideas that we've had 
basically from inception. There are new things that develop, but you know, there's so many different directions that we can go and we just don't have enough time to make all the records and to do all the things that we want to do. And so this is really shook as just an actual extension of things that we've been doing and the next thing that we do, it will be very process oriented and that will determine things, but it's also still very much connected to how we operate and how we function. Speaking of process, I feel like there's always been an interesting contrast between your recorded material and your live shows, and it sounds like there's a lot of flexibility and fluidity in what the band can be. How have you been able to change things up to bring the show live? I know you've got a, another drummer here today, which is great to see. Yeah, yeah. Dante. the great Dante Foley, from uh, primarily from Morning of Black Star, but yeah, Dante, you want to speak for yourself? You can speak, but we probably won't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Cleveland's finest us up in here. Yeah. Well, we got, uh, you know, Algiers has always been about wanting to be a part of something larger than yourself. And back when we were in Atlanta and we were in our different bands, we really wanted a, a scene, so to speak. You know, you look back in different, like, paradigms and different types of music, and there was always scenes, like the no-wave scene in New York and, like, the punk scene the hip-hop scene and, like, jazz scene and, like, the Harlem Renaissance and so forth, you know. People get together and they, they play together and it's expansive and it's fluid. And that's what Algiers always has been, you know. We just are getting a chance to, to actualize it a little bit more. You know, we got Dante, we got our friend Tristan, who does everything, but, you know, um, Tristan plays with us sometimes, you know. You might see him around. We got Patrick Shiroshi up on the Shiroshi. sax. He's an amazing person, and he played a couple shows with us in California. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I also think that what's interesting about Shook is, is it's almost in some ways like a call for like friends and communion. You know what I mean? And one of the most amazing things that happened after that, outside of the fact that we were able to like commune with so many people, and this is also I have to say this is like Frankie's record. Like he he pretty much wrote the whole thing, like executed it front to back. But I would say after we put the record out, our homie King Vision Ultra made an entire new record called Shook World that brought his New York experience, took Shook and flipped it into a whole New York story, which is even more amazing. So we really have a companion thing and our call for you know, friendship that was like really answered by, by gang. So that was really an amazing thing. And I think that really opens up possibilities in the future. That's exciting. I can't see, wait to see what the future brings. Well, thank you for including us as part of your community. We are such longtime fans and consider you family. We're honored and the feeling is mutual. So thank you very much. Thank you so much to all of our wonderful listeners who make wonderful sessions like this one with Algiers Possible. You can learn more about KEXP online at kexp.org and feel free to contribute to make all of these sessions possible. Thank you again so much. It's Algiers live on KEXP Seattle. Thank you. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.